Hey guys, I am going to respond to Alpha Investments video, uh, his most one of his more recent videos. Uh, heads towards zero. Okay, that's actually a bankruptcy video. Alpha Investments heads towards bankruptcy, and obviously he is doing this as light entertainment. He is an incredibly wealthy individual. Uh, he has more than just magic cards, more than just flesh and blood. And let me explain some of the margins on the product that he has. So Monarch first edition, it was about $40, $50 a box to a normal store. I think it was 52. And to a Alpha Investments like store who is, you know, he knows the owner, the creator of the game. I'm sure he pays under $30 a box. He's not paying the typical price because he's an influencer. So if you know anything about crypto, you know that the NFT influencers, they get paid a lot of money to tell you about their flesh and blood product. He sells the boxes for 500 a box. So he's making, at, even at $50 a box, which I think it's much lower, he's making a 10X return per first edition Monarch box for his patrons who are buying this bundle. And there's a minimum of two boxes of bundle. So in a $1,000 product, you know, whatever his play mat and whatever you attribute to his promo, I think you're looking at less than $100 of actual expense. Whenever you have that type of margin, there's no way in hell you can go bankrupt. Simply put, if you have a 10x margin on your product that you're selling in bundles, and you have a lot of people buying these bundles, you're not going bankrupt, but your people buying the bundles are. <laughs> They're gonna go bankrupt soon. So it reminds me a lot of crypto. You know, in crypto, you listen to these YouTubers and they're always talking about, oh, you know, Celsius isn't doing well. It's, and no, no, the Celsius is doing well. Their CEOs are making hand over fist money. It's the people who have their money stuck in Celsius that's not doing well. Uh, same with Do Kwan and the Terra Lunar coin. Do Kwan is fine. I mean, he is wealthy. He's so wealthy that Anonymous has to come after him because no one else can. He's in the Philippines doing Doquan stuff. I mean, if he wasn't doing well, then how did he start Doquan you know, coin 2.0? I mean, obviously he wouldn't have the resources to start a second coin, right? And pump the second coin. So the person who sells you the item isn't in the same boat as you, the buyer of the item. I've tried to explain this time and time again. So when Alpha Investment says, Oh, you know, I feel your pain. You know, we're go we're heading to bankruptcy. I haven't seen the video, but it's got to be a joke. It's got to be a very hilarious joke for people who are actually bankrupting right now. I'm sure they find it really funny that uh, he's making videos like that. Look, he's a smart guy and supposedly he's investing in crypto and Tesla and all these things that have gone there. But at the end of the day, like he's very frugal. Um, the truck that he drove when he was doing his day in the life of, I think is a Nissan Titan, if I'm correct. That's not, you know, any of the trucks. And even my poorest neighbor has a truck, uh, you know, Raptor or a, at, at the very worst, a F-150 that is customized. Yeah, he is driving a Nissan truck. I believe it's a Nissan. Maybe somebody correct me in the comments. But I know it's not a brand new truck. Um, I work in auto. I know. I remember when I saw the truck. I, I knew the model and the make. I know how much it went for. And I was surprised he was driving it because it didn't seem like a Lambo. It's not the Cyber Truck uh, early edition for him as an investor, if you will. Um, he seems to be very frugal. He seems to have a good head on his shoulders, and he knows how to make money. You don't lose money selling at those margins that he sells at. You know, when he sells his Rudy Chan card, I know in the past he said, and this is what strikes me very strange, like in the crypto market, the influencers get paid in both the token, the coin, and then also in cash. And sometimes they take more of the coin and then they sell and that's how they get cash, right? It would be very weird for me that he's like a lot, many of you guys saying he's paying millions of dollars for his promos when you know, it doesn't make, that's not how promotions work. 
Like the idea of giving Rudy promos is to give it to him for free or very, very little cost. So then he will sell your bundles for you. Like, I, I don't think people understand. It's, think about Wizard of the Coast. They give free pro promos to local game stores in the hope that local game stores has tournaments for its player base. And then, you know, they're running these tournaments. Basically, it's prize support. A Wizard of the Coast is not giving prize support for then the game store to sell. They're giving the prize support for the game store to give away for free and to encourage the community in that game store to grow. So I still have uh, somewhat, I am very baffled by why most Rudy Lemmings, Rudy Snowflakes, let's call them, don't understand this, that they think that Rudy's paying all this money for promos, which he graciously gives away for free in his bundles, when that's not the real, like that, I mean, that's not the relationship any big company, any card game has with its store owners, if you call Rudy a store owner, right? Or online sellers, their promos are free. Like when is the last time like a Bushy Road or a Weiss or you know, a Card 5 Vanguard, I mean, they give you so many promos, man. And uh, even Wizard of the Coast gives good promos. I think they gave a Soul Ring promo if you purchase more than $50 in sealed. That was the promotional item I saw for July 4th, at least in a lot of stores. And that was a pretty cool promo and that probably did help push a lot of sales. The idea that the store would pay for the promo is ludicrous. And the idea that the store would then sell the promo, not pay for the promo, and then sell it to their end users like the Rudy Chan promo is just insane. I, you know how many people get upset when a store gets a promo instead of holding the event they're supposed to hold, they throw the promo online. I don't see the difference in, in that. Now again, maybe in that case, there's, the promos are supposed to be used in a certain way, uh, specifically told, but I think the idea of the promo is promotion of the game, is to make the game grow bigger. I don't see how selling Rudy cards for $1,000 instead of having tournaments or gameplay or you know, maybe Flesh and Blood Nights and you know, or maybe a raffle or something like, like a free, something to promote the game uh, instead, I mean, lighting the cards on fire is uh, is uh, not promoting the game, it's promoting yourself that these are rare valuable cards. And like he mentioned, he will at any given time have 10% of, at least 10%. And the 10% doesn't make sense because like how many promo cards does he have? He has 1,500, 10%, he has 1,650, that doesn't make sense. Why would he have 1,650? Why would they print 1,650? That's such a weird number. Um, anyway, when Alpha Investments is, you know, saying that he's heads towards bankruptcy. He doesn't mean it. Uh, he's way wealthy. You don't need to worry about him. He will make more money in a year than you will make in a lifetime. I can almost pretty much tell you that much. Um, he's got government contracts, he said in the past. He's got other relationships, I'm sure. He's got, you know, I mean, look at the flesh and blood in MetaZoo. Look at a gra like how much of a threshold that if they did something to upset him, he can actually go to their event and talk to the creator of the game and say, no man, stop it. Imagine like anyone having that, anyone having that power over, you know, the CEO of Hasbro. Probably not. Anyway, don't worry about him. He'll be fine. He'll, he'll make even more money buying re other people's discount reserve list cards, which then he made another video about. You know, he's poo-pooing the reserve list and the buy list. And you know, I have my own feelings about why he's doing so. Um, cause I get the emails and I can actually tell you a very sad story that recently happened about somebody getting flayed and I know why they got flayed and I know who that is. So sometimes it's hard for me to say these stories because unless it's a graded card, which in magic, there's not that many of the grid and there's not many people wanting to sell. It's hard for me to say, this is the guy, that's the guy. But in this case, I do know this is the guy, um, who sold this collection to Rudy. Um, otherwise, you might just say, oh, well, you know, how do you know that it's that dual land collection? Now, what if it was another guy? And then that's always a concern, right? Because um, now he batches it up. He used to tell you this guy sold this and this guy sold that and this guy. So then I could kind of match the emails with the collections that he's buying. Now he kind of just batches it up and, you know, one mumble jumble because I think he didn't like the fact that I was calling. I mean, 
that BGS card or what PSA card I was graded at, I mean, that was an awful, I was so bad the guy wanted, was actually going to sue me. Not because I bought it from him, because Rudy bought it from him at such a low price. It was an embarrassment, and he was going to sue me for libel and slander. <laughs> and you know, I, I have the email. I can read you the email. I have obviously the guy's full name, and I think I have uh, his email address and so on. I don't know if I had a phone number. I don't think I ever talked to him. But the dude got fleeced so hard by the Rudy Chan that when I made the video covering like what the card is worth today, and I don't even know, I think the card's worth more than what I said back then. It's a one of one It's the only known at the time, I don't, I haven't double checked, it's the only known PSA 10 of the Yagamars Hollow, which is a reserve list legendary land foil. Reserve list foil, PSA 10. Hmm. He also had like a powder keg. I don't know if that was a 10 or a 9.5, but that was, there was like a complication there, but those are the two cards. Uh, hard to value a one on one for sure. It's hard to value. I mean, it's got to be a multiplier of how much Yagamir's Hollow is. Um, but at a PS, uh, a foil Yagamir's Hollow is is more money than I think Rudy paid three hundred dollars for the card. Is maybe he paid three hundred for both? I don't remember. I didn't look back into it. But the a foil Yagamir's Hollow today, raw, not PSA ten, just raw is I think eight hundred nine hundred. I believe. The, at least the last time I checked up, the raw version of it was like triple the price of the graded PSA 10. Which again, I'm talking about foils, is like, I mean, that that's pretty insane because you got to assume the PSA 10 adds some type of multiplier even beyond the foil multiplier. Same serial number. That's how I knew it was the same deal.